Greetings, everyone, and praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us once again in our Life Impact Bible Study of the New Bethel Church here in Kansas City, Kansas. I'm Pastor Brady, and I'm grateful that God has blessed us and allowed us another opportunity to share the words of life. Certainly, God has been good to us, <laughs> and I bless his wonderful name. Well, I've got a lesson for us today, and I want us to prepare to receive. But first, let's uh, consider the need of prayer. So much is happening, and we have to understand that we must stand in the gap and continue as believers, not just here, but across the country and around the world. We must understand that we must uh, seek the Lord, uh, intercede, and pray for God's will to be done. We're praying specifically, as we know today on this Wednesday, that uh, Hurricane Milton is barreling down on the west coast of Florida, and we want to pray for God's protection. We saw the devastation that happened and occurred with uh, Hurricane Helene, where individuals uh, lost lives, their property, their businesses, and for many, the future looks bleak but we know God is able to turn it around. And so we're praying right now, even for the protective power of God, even in West uh, Florida, the West Coast of Florida, that is, the, as this powerful hurricane is coming, we want lives to be saved. And as we consider uh, with less than a month from the election, uh, that is coming up, and we still see the polarization, the division, uh, the hatred. Uh, we want God's peace and his will to be done. We're praying for those who lost loved ones and many who might have physical conditions in their body. Some are recuperating from surgical procedures uh, and we're asking God to heal, to touch, and deliver. So uh, before we begin our lesson, if you would, come on, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your kindness, your mercy, and your grace. Thank you, Lord, for giving us another day of life. We do not take it for granted. God, you have been so good to us. And I praise you today, hallelujah, that you've blessed me to even serve as the pastor of the New Bethel Church. I'm praying your blessings upon God's people, not just in this congregation, but throughout our metropolitan area, as well as throughout the world. As ever before, we need to come together as people of God and, and, and mount up a defense against the forces of evil. I pray today, Lord, that you'll protect even those that are in the path of Hurricane Milton. Oh God, I'm praying in the name of Jesus that lives will be spared. And remember those that are still reeling from the Hurricane Helene, especially in the North Carolina area. God, we look to you because you are the source of our help and strength. Now, Lord, remember those who've lost loved ones, comfort and strengthen them. And God, we pray that you'll heal and touch and deliver those that are being challenged physically. We look to you, Lord, because you are our source of help and strength. Bless us now as we go forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, I'm grateful that I've been blessed to serve in this capacity 
And I want to go right into our lesson for today. God has been so good to us. And I'm telling you, I love him. I love him. I love him for what he's done. So today, as we start, we know that this is the year of Selah. And as we come to the conclusion of this year, as we're now in the fourth quarter, entering into the fall and soon winter season, we cannot forget that the intent of this particular theme was for us to reflect, reassess, but then also to retool. We've got a fantastic uh, lessons that are coming up developed by our Christian Education Department. You'll hear more about it, but I'm excited that they are developing a curriculum that will help us, especially as we now come to the conclusion of this year. And it is our desire that we ever will advance in him. So for the last um, four weeks, God has sent his own series. Uh, as I've shared, this was never my intent. And in some instances, through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, I changed the messages. But look at what the Lord has spoken to us this past four weeks. It started with expect a miracle. <laughs> and then he said, don't get trapped because God is working it out. And this past Sunday, uh, the lesson was do what is right and let God handle it. How amazing God brought forth all of these lessons for us specifically. Uh, it was never my intent, as I told you, my intent, <laughs> to, to create this series but God was speaking to us, and I don't want you to miss what the Lord is saying. Expect a miracle. Don't get trapped. God is working it out, so do what is right and let God handle it. So for today's lesson, uh, everything that I ministered, I normally said somewhere at the beginning that God is intentional. <laughs> That's our lesson for today, is to remind you that our God is intentional. When I was preparing this lesson, I had to remember uh, the song that Travis Green wrote back in 2015, he released this song that was entitled Intentional. I was going to play a clip for you, but I just want you to hear even some of the lyrics or the words to remind us of God being intentional. He says, all things are working for my good. Yea, because he's intentional. Never failing, I know that all things are working for my good. Yes, he's intentional. He goes on to say, we can smile because we know it's working through the hurt and the pain. I know it's working for my good. I know it's working for my good. This, what I've done, I don't worry. I don't have to worry because it's working for me. God is intentional. My faith is rising now. It's working for me. And although I can't see how, it's working for me. Why? Because I know he's intentional. So 
that's what I want to share today in our lesson. And even as I begin to develop the messages that will be coming up, hallelujah, God is intentional. This scripture in Psalms using the New Living Translation is such a blessing because the scripture says the Lord frustrates the plans of the nations and thwarts all their schemes. But look what he says. But the Lord's plans, they stand firm forever. His intentions, there, there it is. His intentions can never be shaken. <laughs> Woo! So we see the, the, the omnipotence of God that he's able to frustrate plans of nations, their schemes, but God's plan stands firm forever. And what he intends cannot be shaken. So when we talk about what is intentional, let me remind you, Intentional means when something is deliberately or on purpose. It's to have a course of action, look, as one's objective. It's their plan. So we're blessed because our God has always been intentional. Uh, he does everything on purpose according to his will. And the Lord we serve is profoundly intentional in all his ways and dealings. All of his actions flow out of his vision, his passion, and his plans. You see, God works differently from us. We start at the beginning, say with a story, and work our way to the end. The Lord doesn't do that. He begins with the end in mind, thus ensuring that everything is that is done is saturated with meaning and dripping with value. Woo! Ooh, glory to God. There are no afterthoughts with God. Everything is forethought with him. You see, sometimes we do things and then we later regret because we have an afterthought. Mm, I should not have done that. Or I should not have said that. Or, oh, why did I do this? That's because we had an afterthought. God doesn't work that way. Hallelujah. Well, because he's so powerful and because he's so great, because there's none like him, God does things always without any regrets. There's none that could be compared to him. That is why we must continually recognize him as our God and our Savior, and no matter how bleak things may look, no matter how discouraging we sometimes can feel, this lesson is sent to remind us that God is intentional. Oh, you see, you have to tell yourself, I am not an accident. I'm not an afterthought. And where somebody may have even suggested we weren't planning on you to be here, God makes no mistakes. Hallelujah. And that's why we must continually defeat the spirit of the enemy when he brings even the suggestion of suicide. It's amazing. How if you're not rooted, listen, and grounded 
in the word of God, if you do not have the life source of the Holy Spirit within you, it is so easy to succumb when things are not working out that the adversary will suggest that you should take your life, uh, that when hard times come and, and he suggests there's no way out, there's, there's no hope, oh my God, the devil is a lie. And I'm here to let you know that you have to declare, I will not die, but live. Oh, because God has an intentional purpose. He, he does things on intent, intentional because he's got a plan worked out. I know sometimes we get frustrated. Sometimes we get discouraged. Because it does not appear as if things are working out like we want it to or even as we've planned. But understand that the Lord has a course of action for each one of us. There is an objective. Glory to God. And what we must do is learn how to bring our will with God's will. I love him today. I will never forget how good he's been. And that's why as pastor, I'm continually reminding us of the blessings of God. Uh, remember the lesson that I just taught. It is so easy that we will forget how good God has been to us. But we must consider, hallelujah, where we could be. Listen, even where we should be, but for the grace of God. Mm. That's why I will never forget how God brought us as a congregation, even me individually, through the COVID crisis. I'll never forget. Uh, I'm still building the the. Uh, getting ready for the writing of the book that I know uh, I'm feeling the inspiration of God to 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 get into dealing with live your best abundant life and I'm starting with how that impression came upon me during COVID oh I'll never forget saints and that's why we have to constantly remind ourselves that when things are getting so bleak in our eyes and when things are not happening according to how we want them, God is intentional. You see, this lesson is to encourage us. I know it's got to encourage me. It's got to encourage you because the Lord is working it out. I am not an accident. Will you declare that with me? I am not an accident. Hallelujah. I'm not an afterthought. Nothing in my life has happened as a coincidence. God's intentionality is one of the greatest testaments of his love for me. He pays attention to every detail of my life. And we all can look back and see instances that would have destroyed our lives, destroyed our future, but God intervened, hallelujah, and turned it around. Uh, he was purposeful in everything that he did, including adopting me into his family. That is how we define grace. Because when we consider the millions of people uh, oh, that have been born, God chose me. Hallelujah. Great God Almighty. Out of the millions of people, uh, Frederick Stevens, uh, a famous uh, pianist and writer of gospel music, wrote that song, out of the millions of people, God has selected me. 
That is grace. I remember talking with a, a, a great a spiritual leader, and he was defining to me what grace is all about. It's as if a person walks through a cemetery and without any kind of uh, reasoning that would justify, he selects this person to live that was dead in the grave. And then he goes and selects another person and he goes and selects another person while others are still dead the one who had the power to bring back life selected these individuals. Glory, not that they deserved it, not that it was something that uh, they could have paid for, uh, but because of his grace, hallelujah, that's what God did with us. Oh, he found us in our sins. He found us in a wretched condition. He found us in death, but thank God he chose us. You see, we're drawn to him, hallelujah, because of his magnetic force and because of his magnetic power. God is intentional. That's why I love the scripture from Proverbs chapter number 16. He says, commit your actions to the Lord, and what will happen? Your plans will succeed. Why? The Lord has made everything for his own purposes. Look, 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 even the wicked for a day of disaster. That's why uh, even from the lesson on this past Sunday, just do what is right. Oh, because God will work it out. We talked about Abigail and how she could have done what was seemingly logical that would bring the demise of her husband. Oh, but no, she did the right thing. Glory to God. And as a result, he still got the judgment for his wicked ways, but she was blessed to become the wife of a king. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. I'm telling you, the Lord has made everything for his own purposes. And that's why we as a people of God must continually look to him. The scripture says Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. Look at that. Uh, that the Christ, when we look at that the, in the Greek, the Christos, the, the, the image or the flesh of God, uh, he became the means by which man can see an invisible God. But look what he says. He, referring to Christ, look, existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation, for through him, God created everything. Look, 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 in the heavenly realms and on earth. This shows the monotheism of God. It gives to us clarity that Christ and God are one. Hallelujah. The Father and the Son, while they're different manifestations, are one because the uh, uh, the writer to the church of Coloss said Christ is that visible image of an invisible God. Woo! And that Christ, look, not God, Christ existed before anything was created. How could he do that? Because he was God and is supreme over all creation, for through him, God created everything, my goodness, everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can see. My God, my God, I'm telling you, God is intentional. 
And even when we cannot understand, when we don't know how, sometimes we don't know where or why, I'm encouraging you, don't give up. Never, never, never give up, but know that the Lord is working it out. Listen, our humanity, even myself, we get discouraged. Hallelujah. And, and as I share one Sunday, it's even challenging for us to encourage ourselves. Oh, but but you've got to muster up some way, somehow to understand God is still in control. God is intentional and God is working it out. Ah, you've got to muster up even the ability to call on the name of Jesus. There's power in that name. I've shared on several occasions, sometimes you can fall in a deep sleep, but, but the sleep is of such where you're almost uh, semi-conscious. Uh, you, you can't move, but you can still hear and, 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 and you can still have some sense of what's going on, but it's like you can't move. Uh, uh, you're almost like in a dead state, but you're yet still aware of what's happening. Great God Almighty. And what you've got to do at that point is if you can muster up in some way, somehow in your spirit, say, Jesus, ah, and it breaks the hold. That's what we have to understand, that when we call on the name of Jesus, it will break the hold that the adversary is trying to put on us. It'll break, hallelujah, every chain that the adversary is trying to bind us with. But there's power in the name of Jesus. Uh, woo! And God is intentional. Look what the scripture says. Isaiah wrote, who is able to advise the spirit of the Lord? Woo! Who knows enough to give him advice or even teach him. Oh, I remember uh, the scriptural passage when Job was complaining and, and, and was questioning God on what he was doing. And, and God had to come thundering out of heaven to Job. Where were you when I created the heavens? <laughs> Hallelujah. We've got to remember that we should not question God. Uh, we were not there when he created. Uh, we were not there when he used his omnipotent power and, 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 and just spoke things into existence. So we should never question him. Uh, we should certainly never charge him foolishly. Uh, and the Isaiah writer uh, reminds us, who is able to advise the spirit of the Lord? God is intentional. And even when he walks us down paths that we would not on our own choose and maybe are even feeling a, a, a negative about, and, and it's not the, the easiest or the most comfortable, and, and it doesn't feel good, uh, God knows what he's doing. Uh, and the, uh, the, uh, the Isaiah said, who knows enough to give him advice or to teach him? Hallelujah. How can we teach God? Uh, how can we advise him? Lord, this is not what should happen in my life. And God, this is not what should be going on. Uh, Lord, you should not have taken my mom or my dad and, oh, uh, but I'm telling you, has the Lord ever needed anyone's advice? Uh, does he need instruction about what is good? Isaiah is just reminding us of the power of God. Woo, glory to God. Does someone teach him what is right or show him the path of justice 
That is a good passage of scripture that I would encourage you. Read the entire Isaiah chapter number 40. Uh, it reminds us that, that we are so small. We're so insignificant without God. And, and what we've got to remember, God is intentional. Saints, understand the lesson today. Everything that is happening, God is yet in control. Even when we feel he's abandoned us. Ah, oh, even when we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, we're reminded he is still with us. And there's sometimes paths, there's sometimes instances that he allows us to experience because remember, as I started off with the song written by Travis Green, all things are working for my good. Hallelujah, because he's intentional. Even when we don't think so, hallelujah, he never fails us. All things are working for my good. And I praise the Lord and I hope you understand that. Be encouraged today. That's right. This lesson is to send encouragement to you. God is working it out. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Oh, let him handle it. Take your hands off of it. If there was something that you should have gotten out of that last Sunday's message is, take your hand off of things and let God do it. We often will get involved because we look logically, but there's some things that are just too great for us that our human logic can handle. That's why God knows what he's doing and we bow to him in his omnipotence because he's my father and I am his child. So today, saints, I want you to be encouraged and remember that God is intentional. Now, we've got a number of things that are coming up that I want you to be aware of uh, here at New Bethel, especially as we conclude this month of October. Next week, there'll be a fasting with everyone. Some may even be fasting before. Some may feel the fast even after. But I'm asking those who will in a combined fast. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of next week. 16th, 17th, and 18th. We're going to be fasting from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. or uh, your 6.30 to 6.30 a.m. Uh, it's going to be 12 hours from your last meal. You will not any eat anything until 12 hours at least later. That's going to be on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And on next Wednesday, we're going to have an in-person life uh, uh, impact, concluding with a time of prayer. I've got a lesson that I want to share with you uh, that, that uh, will give you greater insight as to the power of prayer and what we must be doing as Christian believers, especially in times like this. So, you who can, I'll be sharing more on Sunday, will be fasting from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m or whatever your last meal is, 12 hours at least before you eat again. 
And then on next Wednesday, I will be teaching in person Life Impact from the Sanctuary following a time of prayer. And then I felt led of the Spirit that on next Friday, I will be in the sanctuary praying beginning at 7 p.m. And those who want to join me in the sanctuary prayer, you are invited to participate as we come together for an hour at least of prayer. I just feel compelled of the Holy Spirit with so much that is going on to meet God in the sanctuary, hallelujah, to lay out before him, to call his name, oh, to wail before him. And the, the lesson on Wednesday will give you insight as to why we must, as believers, Christian believers, uh, pray, and there will be specific objectives that we will be praying about. So again, uh, if you would, mark your calendars now. Fasting next Wednesday through Friday, we're going to be beginning at 6 p.m., or your last meal, 6.30, whatever, and you will not eat anything for another 12 hours at least until the following morning. Then next Wednesday, I'll be teaching an in-person lesson here in the sanctuary, followed by a time of prayer. And then on that Friday, I'm coming out to be in the sanctuary for prayer. And I'm inviting those who want to join me, glory to God, to come out and, and plead before the Lord. Call out and cry. And, and there will be specific prayer objectives that we will be doing. And many of you can join us uh, from around the country, even where you're at in time of prayer. And that, that prayer will begin at 7 p.m. Hallelujah. Glory to God. On that Saturday, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, we're having our new members class part two. This is going to be a time of teaching and instruction just to get you oriented new members especially with uh, New Bethel. And we want you to come and, and, and glean and receive. Also on that same day, the Light Youth Book Club will be meeting. We have the Light Book Club, but this is the youth. Uh, they've got their own book club, and they also will be on that Saturday. And then a week Sunday... We will be serving communion uh, in the service. That, of course, is going to be the 20th, not this coming Sunday, but a week Sunday. We're serving Holy Communion, hallelujah, in the morning service. We need God. Glory to God. Now, and the last Sunday of October, a couple things are happening the NBC Youth and Children's Church, they're taking a fall field trip during the service. We normally have Harvest Fest. So this is like a Harvest Fest. We're going to uh, be taking the youth, uh, the young people, the, the youth staff, they've got it all worked out. They're going to be leaving Sunday morning and then returning Sunday afternoon, they'll give you all of the specifics and we'll share more about it uh, on the 20th that you can be aware of. And also on the 27th will be the Breast Cancer Awareness Sunday. And I am so grateful how the Lord has continually 
healed and touched. And we have so many who can testify of what God has done in their lives and brought them through. Glory to God. Uh, we, we recognize the power of uh, medication, the physicians, the understanding, but we do not at all negate the power of God in the healing process. Well, I pray again you've been blessed, and I do want to encourage you. Listen, saints, we need your continual support, and I am grateful for those who have always been consistent in your giving, both of your tithes and your offering to support the efforts that we're doing here at New Bethel. Oh, God has been so good to us. I bless his wonderful name. And, and see, giving is part of our worship. Oh, it's part of us declaring that, God, I worship you and I am willing to give of my substance because I praise God, hallelujah, that, that the integrity of our team is of such that we are constantly doing more and more to improve uh, the, the, the experience you have in coming to New Bethel. And we're looking even more uh, from, from small things like lights in the parking lot to what we need with instruments and, and how we serve your people and the cleanliness of the building and, and the projection that we're doing, even through video streaming and all the work we do uh, with ministry and outreach. This is because of your continual support, and I am so grateful. And of course, you can always give through Cash App, GiveLify, PayPal, or even in service. You can, of course, give uh, through your cash and credit card, whatever means is necessary, we want you to always uh, recognize that you are, are a blessing to New Bethel. And again, I'm grateful for each one of you. I thank you uh, as you've been praying for me and Lady Angela. Thank you. Glory to God. And I request your continual prayers because we need him. I need him. Hallelujah. And we need each other. So encourage somebody. Call them. Especially those that might be going through something and you haven't seen them in a while. Just let them know I'm praying with you. The Lord put you in my spirit and I just want to check on you and make sure everything is okay. If we ever needed each other, and if we ever needed the Lord before, we sure do need him now. I hope to see you this coming Sunday. Bring somebody, bring a friend, bring a family member. I got a great testimony of somebody, hallelujah, that, that, that was witness to and came to the church, hallelujah, during the day was ministered to and made the decision, I want to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And before they left, were filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, saints, never underestimate the power of your testimony. And remember, God will use you with a divine rendezvous to help somebody else. Be blessed, and I pray that you'll continually look to the Lord, and I hope to see you this coming Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen. Greetings. Welcome to the New Bethel Church. Morning prayer is held every Wednesday at 6.15 a.m. Call details are on the church website and social media pages. Prayer requests can be submitted throughout the week to the church office, or you may email them to prayer at newbethelkc.org. Sunday morning services are in person and online each week at 10 a.m. Our youth and teens have age-appropriate lessons on each month's second and fourth Sundays. 
Life Impact Bible Study will air online from our YouTube channel, New Bethel KC TV, this Wednesday at 7 p.m. We invite you to tune in and share with others. New members classes will be held on October 19th and November 9th. If you joined the ministry in 2023 or 2024, we encourage you to attend both sessions. Confirm your attendance online or by contacting the church office. New Bethel Church members are invited to a mental health first aid training on October 12th from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the University of Kansas Medical Center in the Health Education Building. Details at newbethelkc.org. On Sunday, October 27th, we invite you to worship in pink. This will be the day we recognize breast cancer awareness at the new Bethel Church. We encourage you to stay connected to the new Bethel Church by following our social media platforms, New Bethel KC. Thank you for seating into the New Bethel Church. Electronic giving options are displayed. If you would like to give in person, by cash, check, or credit card, please see the designated individuals as you exit.